thinking about the endeavor in which we were engaged for these three days of rehearsing, and, and everybody who had come pretty prepared, yes. was how do we get to joy? How do yeah, we yeah, get to yeah, glorious? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I know. That's how quite... do you do that? How do you get people to want to be to glorious? Yeah. Well, I, my view is, again, you, if you've got a bunch of people coming from all different, I mean, everyone, it was a one-off choir, and I know you know yourself, that experience yesterday, we had six hours of rehearsal or whatever it was um, yesterday, and suddenly there was a kind of meeting point where everyone, and you suddenly thought, actually, this is beginning to sound like a group of people who are actually all, all relating. And I think if, my, I, I feel my job is to make people feel comfortable that they can do that. You know, that, that they don't feel intimidated because they come, they've got to enjoy it. You know, if, you, if someone goes home and says, I, I went to Kimberley for two days and I was frightened and this idiot from Britain <laughs> came and he, and he was horrible. And, and I, felt, I felt disappointed or I felt, you know, that, that would be awful because these people come thinking, I want to do this and I, you know, it's a massive investment for people to do that of time and money and energy and learning and... Which gets us to music. Exactly. And, and that's what they want to do because they want to know that. You talk quite eloquently and you were very nice rehearsing for two and a half days to, to keep it light enough that we could continue to be engaged with you. Right. That, oh, he isn't some jerk from Britain, <laughs> whatever you said. Well, well he might be, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yep. Oh, England. It's a matter of opinion. <laughs> <laughs> the, the idea that, that music is universal was when you kept coming back to that, that it was what binds us. There are those who say, we have a wonderful book here somewhere called uh, uh, The Singing Neanderthals. Uh -huh. And it's, a, it's really a very elegant exploration of how does language evolve. And there are those who say that music comes first. Yeah. And then from that you can, you can, uh, you can blossom into yes. to language, which I, I buy it. I think it's a good argument. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, with you on that. The, the universality of this, and, and people have said to me, Paula, everything you talk about, you talk about politics. Well, yes. yes. Life is politics, <laughs> isn't oh. it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> music certainly is politics. Yes. You have spoken, and I'd like to hear you speak some more about music as a, a transcendent thing, that something that, that is deeply political, that mm. can, can make miracles, that yes. nothing else can do. Yes. Well, I think, um, in my experience, I, I've been very lucky as a musician who can travel, um, and you can go anywhere in the world, and, and we, uh, this experience we've had over the last three days, you could do that anywhere in the world with people from that from same countries, and it would be the same experience. Would if you, those people were from eleven to seven different countries, would it be the same? Yeah, it would be exactly the same, because to be a, a to be a musician, you have to be prepared to be made vulnerable, and I think that's a huge jump for a lot of people. I think particularly with singing, because you come, and you know, voice is something that is. It's completely personal to you. You have a different voice to me, and it's who you are, and it's your experience, and mine is mine, and and we have to make those meet, and I think that's a beautiful idea. 